When I first went into online business, my main goal was freedom. I wanted to set myself free from the constraints of my job. Maybe this is your goal as well when you think about starting your online business, growing it to the point where you can one day leave your nine to five like I did three and a half years ago and like so many people have or are planning to do. But what I have found is that there's actually something that I have experienced that is far more beneficial than freedom. What is it? We're gonna talk about it in this video. My name's Lane. I love to help aspiring entrepreneurs start and grow their passive income style online businesses. If you're new here and you want an awesome resource, go to lanesebring.com slash super simple. Pick up your free super simple guide to your first $500 online. This will be everything you need to know to get started growing your online business. I'm gonna show you how to make that first 500 bucks starting your business and after that you'll be able to make 500,000 if you want to. So like I said, when I first went into online business, my main goal was freedom, time freedom, financial freedom, location freedom, work freedom. I just wanted to be free. And I was able to achieve that type of freedom relatively quickly. And I'm incredibly thankful to God for that. I know what it is to feel incredibly trapped in my job. In fact, I used to sit in the parking lot of my job and just think about how I wanted a different life. I would sit there before I had to go into work and I would think I want to have a different situation in life. I do not like this. And so freedom in terms of location freedom, I have that. I live where I want to live. In terms of work freedom, I have that. I work how I want to work. Financial freedom, I have that. The income is coming in and growing. And all of it is incredibly amazing. But what I have found is that the thing I lacked when I had a job that I now have is related to freedom, but it's actually different. I think it's a bigger motivator than freedom has ever been. And that is this, autonomy. I now have autonomy in my life and work. And it's very, very difficult to put a value or a price on that. Let me tell you what it was like before I had the autonomy that I now have. I used to absolutely detest the idea of asking another man's permission to take a day off or a week off or any time off. To have to go to someone as a grown man, to go to someone else and be like, hey, can I have time off? I know that's normal. I know it's what people do. I just absolutely loathed it. And maybe you're like that. Maybe you're like the kind of person who says, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to have to, I don't, as a grown person, I don't want to have to go to someone else and say, can I please have some time off or fill out a form and hope that they let you off. I just, I hated every solitary single second of that. But it wasn't just asking permission to take time off. It was also the fact that I, I would feel badly for missing work. I would feel this sense of anxiety, like what's going on there without me? And then I would come back to a mountain of work to deal with. And then when I was on vacation or taking time off, the longer I was off, the more I'd wonder what's going on without me. What am I having? What am I going to have to deal with when I get back? Then I would plan the times where I would check email and I would think, what's going to be in my email that's going to hijack the moment that I'm in right now? Like I'm enjoying vacation with my friends or family. I'm in a different place, enjoying a different type of cuisine. I'm going to the beach. I'm doing whatever I'm doing. And yet I have this thing that's kind of hanging over my head thinking I've got to check in with work and what I find there might really completely hijack my mind and my heart for the rest of the day or for the rest of this week. Because usually it's not something that I can actually deal with quite yet, but it's there and I will think about it. So whether I even had something to think about or not, I didn't like it. Not to mention the fact that sometimes I would have text messages that came through where I couldn't avoid it because you can just choose not to check email. You can't really choose not to check text messages. So when they come through, you just, you see them. So that's just one example of the fact that I remember those days when I didn't have a say. And that's really what I think the main difference is. I was free to go on the vacation, but I had to ask to do it. And then I didn't really have a say in how I managed or controlled my time when I was away on vacation or what I was exposed to or what I was forced to think about or deal with. All of those things were out of my control. So again, there was a lack of autonomy and maybe you experienced the same thing and maybe that's why you're interested in 
online business. So I wanna paint a picture for you of what my life and work looks like now on this side. What does autonomy look like? How do I define it? And what are the kind of symptoms of autonomy? Because it's really important to define what you want. And when I would sit in the parking lot before work and I would think about how I don't wanna be there and I don't wanna to have to do that thing and I don't wanna to have to be at a certain place at a certain time and do a certain thing, when I would just sit there and wish for a different life, it was very helpful for me to envision what could this look like if I were to have the kind of life that I actually want. So here they are. Number one, I only do things I like doing. Now, this pertains to my work for sure, but generally speaking, just kind of in life, I just don't do things I don't wanna do. And I remember when I had a job, there was all kinds of things that I had to do or be a part of that I just didn't want to, and now I have the autonomy to say, hmm, I'm not gonna do that. I only work with people I like working with. When you have a job, you can't really control who your coworkers are, you can't control who is on the team, who's not on the team. A lot of times if you're working with people as customers or as, you know, in my case, with volunteers that we worked with, because I, I worked at a church, it was a nonprofit, so we worked a lot with volunteers who would serve in different capacities, and I had coworkers, and I had people that I worked with, and there were people that I really enjoyed working with, for sure, but there's people that I just didn't enjoy working with and were kind of a drain on me. And when I went into online business, I just made a decision that if I don't really connect with someone, if there's not like a connection or chemistry, I, I don't need to continue working with that person because I only work with people that I wanna work with. I have fired coaching clients before, like people that wanted coaching from me and maybe we went down that road and I realized you're not coachable or I don't wanna work with you or you're not the kind of person that I wanna work with and you can be very selective, especially the further down the road you get. And so I just very, very picky these days about who I work with because time is so limited. You don't get that typically in a job. That kind of autonomy is out of your hands. Someone else a lot of time is making those decisions for you, which I, again, hate. <laughs> this one is a big one. If I'm not good at something, I stop doing that thing, period. If I'm not good at something, I stop doing it. Or if I don't enjoy it, which is another way of saying the same thing, because you, typically you're good at the things that you enjoy. But I remember being in jobs where I had to do things that I wasn't actually skilled at doing. They were incredibly intimidating. I didn't like doing it. I didn't enjoy it. It was just work. It was drudgery. And so because I didn't enjoy doing it and wasn't very good at it, the result wasn't good, which made it even more stressful, which caused a lot more anxiety. These days, if I'm doing something that I'm not very good at, I either completely eliminate it altogether, I just stop doing it, or I hire someone who can do it for me. And that autonomy is really nice. If I don't wanna work, I don't work, period. So for example, yesterday, it was a Monday in November, my kids were out of school because it's around Thanksgiving and the weather was nice, so I completely just blew off my work and we went to the beach and we had a beach day. If I had a job Thanksgiving week and we were already gonna be off later in the week for Thanksgiving, maybe Thursday and Friday, it would be very difficult for me to just call in and say, hey, I'm not coming to work today. I know it's we're, we're all working, we're trying to get done before the holiday weekend, but I wanna to go to the beach today. Probably wouldn't be a thing that I could do. Or at least even if I could do it, I probably wouldn't do it because I was such a conscientious employee. I never wanted anybody to be upset with me. So I would have just said, okay, it's a nice day, you guys have fun at the beach, I'll go to work. And by the way, wasn't even an option because I didn't live anywhere near the beach like I do now. <laughs> but now I live at the beach and I get to do what I want when I wanna do it, so I blew off work and went to the beach. Along those same lines, I take three to four months off a year. Typically what this looks like is most of summer, at least when the kids are out of school, most of December, and then different weeks here and there. I don't like to work when the kids are out of school if I can help it. And I like to take a day off, a week off, a month off, whenever I want. And what makes this possible is I have a business model that works for me 24 hours a day, seven days a week in the background of my life, where it is a system that generates sales for me so that I don't have to be there present in the moment for this flywheel of income generation to keep working. That is the absolute magic of online business. And it's one of the things that I will show you in the super simple guide, lanesebring.com slash super simple. Because it is not like I'm this, 
amazing genius. I am just using a business model that I've learned from a lot of people and developed my own way of doing it that I've taught many others and that I do myself. And it just works for me on my behalf, 24 hours a day, seven days a week in the background of my life. And that makes a massive difference in my level of both freedom and autonomy because it's working even when I'm not. That's why I can take so much time off and the business never stops running. Okay, this one is one of my favorites. I have no boss for whom I have to win approval. I hated having to worry about whether my boss was happy with my performance and my personality and how I looked. <laughs> I, I, I hated every bit of it. I, hate, I always, always hated that. And I had some good bosses and I had some not so good bosses. And, so, and I was the boss in a lot of cases, but I hated having a boss who I had to win their approval because I would start to become obsessed with how do I get this guy to approve of me and my work. And that type of anxiety and stress would keep me up at night. I mean, I'd wake up in the middle of the night and I'd think about like a mistake that I had made. And then I would think about how I might not be in their good graces. And then it would stress me out and I don't have to deal with that anymore, which is great. There is no upper cap on my income. Now I will tell you, this one is personal for me. I hated the fact that no matter how hard I worked, there was always going to be this upper limit that I was never going to break past. And part of that was because of the industry that I was in. I was a pastor. You don't go into being a pastor for the money. The only people who make a lot of money are the guys who write books and have massive mega churches. The rest of us were barely making <laughs> anything, okay? And so you don't do it for the money. But as someone who is a go-getter and pretty driven, I never liked the fact that I could just work till my fingers bled and I wouldn't make any more money. It's not just about the money, but things are expensive and getting more expensive all the time. And I have four kids and a golden retriever and I live in a very, very expensive area. So I like the fact that there is just no limit to how much money I can make. And it doesn't even require me working more. The business works for me and continues to grow even outside of my direct input of time and forcing it to scale, it just works and grows over time. I can be as creative as I wanna be with what I do how I do it, what I experiment with, what I try, what I don't try, what I start doing, what I stop doing, it's all completely up to me. And that type of freedom and autonomy in my work opens up all kinds of possibilities. I get to just dream about well, what, do I, what do I wanna do this year? I went out of town a couple weeks ago to Phoenix to plan out 2024, to write down my goals, my thoughts on what I want to do in terms of products and promotions and content, how I want to serve you, my audience here at Lane Sebring, and also my audience over at Preaching Donkey, two different online businesses, same exact model that I run. And I just dreamed and I didn't have to think about, well, is, you know, does this fit with the goals of the organization and the vision set by the leader? I don't, it's me. <laughs> I get to do what I want. You know, as long as it's like legal and ethical, like I get to do what I want as a creative, as, as an entrepreneur, as someone who has like big dreams, that type of freedom and autonomy, being set free in that way feels really, really good. Now you might be thinking, oh, must be nice. Sounds great for you, awesome. I wanna encourage you with this. I'm nothing special, truly. I just found a business model that takes a bit of work up front to set things into motion, but it kind of functions like a snowball rolling down a hill. As the, the ball gets going, it's small, right? Like there's not much to it. And you gotta kind of push it because it's gonna get stuck. Even though it's going down a hill, it's too small to have the weight it needs to kind of push its way down the hill. But if you keep rolling it and pushing it, eventually what happens is gravity takes over. That ball continues to roll. Now it's rolling on its own. And every turn over, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And if you have a big hill, that ball's gonna get really, really, really big. That's the way this works. You're putting in a lot of work up front. You're making content, you're building out your courses, you're growing your audience, you're finding out who you're serving and what you're serving them with and how you're serving them. You're doing all of these things. And eventually you hit this tipping point where you go, oh my gosh, this thing is making a lot of money and it's not requiring a ton from me anymore. And this is incredibly, rewarding and I am 
hitting that point and it's incredibly exciting. And I love helping people make this kind of thing come alive in them as well. If you've ever been interested in starting your online business or maybe you have an existing business and you're looking to grow it or scale it to make it the kind of thing that I've been able to create for my work and my life, I'm gonna be dropping something in the next couple of days, in fact, the day after Thanksgiving, that you are going to want to see. It is going to be an amazing opportunity for you to jump in head first. It's a resource that I've built just for you for this time. It's tested, it's proven, and it will guide you step by step on exactly what you need to do to make all of this happen. The best way that you're gonna be able to know about it is to be on my email list. The best way to get on my email list is to go to lanesebring.com slash super simple. You get the free resource and then you'll catch the emails for what I'm dropping on Friday. I can't wait to show you what it is. Just be ready because it could change your life like it did mine. Now, in the meantime, I wanna show you in three simple steps how you can go from where you are to a six-figure business, at least the way I did it. That video is right here, check it out.